Hello, welcome to the Wisdom Inspire Talks podcast. I am Yomi Akinpelu, your wisdom coach, speaker, teacher, and author of several books. Today, I'm talking about a really important topic, a topic that affects all of us, and that is the topic of troubles, trials, and tribulations. Do you know that difficult times, trying times, can define us or diminish us or develop us. You decide. When you go through trials and tribulations, remember what Jesus Christ said. In John 16, 33, Jesus Christ said this. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And then Isaiah 43, verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. James 1 verse 2 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporary, temporary. But the things that are not seen are eternal. And I hear you say, light affliction? This doesn't feel light, but the Bible says they are light affliction compared to the eternal weight of glory that awaits you. Remember that when you're going through your trials and tribulations, when you're going through the fire of affliction, it is not for your destruction. It is for refining you bear that in mind for our light affliction is working for us a far more eternal weight of glory now there are three things you need to do when you're going through the fire of affliction three things the first thing is to rejoice yes rejoice start rejoicing Philippians 4 verse 4 says, Rejoice again and I say rejoice. So rejoice and then rewind that joy and rejoice again. Stop praising God. Stop worshipping God. It is really important to rejoice when you're going through tribulations and trials and troubles because the joy of the Lord is is your strength. In other words, rejoicing and praising God actually gives you strength. It strengthens you. Nehemiah 8 10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. James 1 2 says, Count it all joy when you go through trials and tribulations. In other words, rejoice. Take the trouble and the trial as an opportunity to rejoice. Let it be an opportunity for rejoicing. And 1 Thessalonians 16 says, Rejoice always. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, In everything give thanks. These are the things you need to do during trials, troubles, and temptations. Rejoice and again rejoice. Also, Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3 says, With joy you will draw from the wells of salvation. That means that joy is like a bucket. And with that bucket, you draw from the wells of salvation, from the wells of peace, of joy, of rejoicing, of strength, of glory, of wealth, of honor, 
everything that is in the salvation package. You use joy to draw it out. So never let trials and tribulations steal your joy because joy is a fetcher. And with joy, you would draw from the wells of salvation. The next thing you need to do when you're going through trials and tribulations is you begin to pray. Pray strategic prayers. Philippians 4, 6 says you should pray. Don't be anxious for anything, but with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Ephesians 6, 18 says, pray all manner of prayers. When you're going through trials and tribulations, begin to pray. Pray in the morning, pray in the night. Be like Jabez who cried out to God, Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, keep evil away from me. Lord, help me. Begin to pray all manner of prayer and supplication in the spirit with thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 6 also says that. That be anxious for nothing. Don't begin to worry, but begin to pray. Strategic prayers. Pray like Jacob prayed in Genesis 32. When he was left alone, he began to pray. He began to cry out to the Lord. Cry out to the Lord in the time of afflictions and trials. And God will hear you. Pray like it says in James 5.13. Is any afflicted? Let him pray. Cry out to the Lord. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. His ears are open to their cry. So pray. Don't let anything distract you from the place of prayer. You see, prayer stabilizes you. Prayer enlarges you. Prayer strengthens you and increases your capacity. So pray. Pray and use your spiritual weapons. Use the whole armor of God. Gird your loins with truth. Use the sword of the Spirit. Rely on the help of the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of prayer. He is the spirit of grace and supplication. Romans 8, 26 and 27 says, Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. We might not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit knows exactly how to pray. He knows how to pray. He amplifies our prayer. He deepens the reach of our prayers. He expands our capacity. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the understanding. Decree and declare the Word of God. Now the third thing you must do in a time of trials and tribulation is begin to declare the Word of God. The Bible says where the Word of a King is, there is power. God has said, I am watching over my word to perform it. The angels of God, they hearken to the voice of the word of God that we speak. The word of God will never return to him void, but will prosper and accomplishes that word for which he has sent it. So we must decree and declare the word of God. The Scriptures are loaded with spiritual ammunition to bring down every work of darkness, to help us to overcome in every trial and tribulation we might find ourselves. When you're going through trials and tribulations, you must never keep quiet. You must decree and declare the word of God. In Ezekiel 37, 4, God said to Ezekiel, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So when you're going through a dry season, a time of trials and tribulations, God is saying the same to you. Decree and declare. Prophesy to your situation. Speak to your situation. Say, thus saith the Lord, surely I will cause bread to enter into you and you will live again. You need to speak the word of God. God wants you to decree and declare. Speak to your situation. Speak to that mountain. 
be removed. Speak to the dry bones. Live again. Let the breath of Almighty God enter into you. If you go to Psalm chapter 3, verse, starting from verse 1, it says, Lord, how they are increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are saying there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. They might come against me in one way, but they will flee in seven different directions. Because I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, I abide safe and secure under the shadow of the Almighty. No evil will come near me. No plague will come near my dwelling place. I arise, I shine, my time has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. No weapon formed or fashioned against me will prosper. Every tongue risen against me in judgment is condemned already. Peace, righteousness, security, triumph over all forms of opposition is my portion. And as I speak in the Lord's ear, so he will do unto me. These are the kind of things we need to speak. We need to decree and declare in times of trials and tribulations. God has magnified his word even above his name. Psalm 138 verse 2 says, and he says, In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. So you want to be speaking the word of God. Say, so though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect all that which concerns me. So take the word of God in your mouth and decree and declare because that word will not return void. It will accomplish that for which God has sent it. It will yield, it will produce for you. Decree and declare the word of God always in every situation you find yourself. Use the word of God to bring down the works of darkness. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He who keeps me does not sleep or slumber. The Lord is my shade on my right hand side. The sun will not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep my going out and my coming in from henceforth and forever. The word of God is really powerful. God's power dwells in his word. The Holy Spirit rides upon the word to accomplish God's purposes for us. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. He maintains my lot. The lines are falling upon me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I have set the Lord always before me because he's on my right hand. I shall not be moved. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds me round and about. The Lord has sent his word. I am healed. I am delivered from all destruction. My brothers and my sisters, take the word of God in your mouth. Decree and declare there is no enchantment, no sorcery, no witchcraft, no divination will stand or prevail against me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I have been delivered from the dominion and the power of darkness. Christ has delivered me from the curse of the law. No man can curse me because I am blessed of the Lord. Jesus, your sacrifice has blotted out every handwriting contrary to me. In conclusion, my brothers and my sisters, when you are going through tribulations and trials, never let your zeal for God go down. In fact, that is a time when you should Press into God even more. That's when you should pray more, praise more, rejoice more. Declare the word of God even more than ever before during trials and tribulations. Don't let anything, anyone, or any trouble let your zeal for God go down. Let it rather increase. Let it rather jump a notch take it to the next level during trials and 
temptations. Take your passion for God to the next level. So the devil regrets ever messing with you. And that is all for today. But before you go, make sure you subscribe, share, like, and comment below. Apparently, this helps the YouTube algorithm. It tells YouTube to share this video with even more people. And until next time, keep on growing in wisdom and maturity. Keep on dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Keep on abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. And remember, in trials, in tribulations, you should always rejoice. Rejoice. Because with joy, you will draw from the wells of salvation. In times of trials and tribulation, remember to speak the word of God. Speak, decree, and declare, and you will be justified. In times of trials and tribulations, pray. Never stop praying. Cry unto the Lord and he will hear you. God bless you.